we've already worked on building a database, creating a table, adding fields to those tables, and even making changes to those fields. But something you might have noticed is that everything that we've looked at so far has included either just an auto number or a short text field. And I want to show you some of the other data fields that you might have when you build a table. So I'm going to come over here to my Create tab, and I'm going to choose Table Design once again. This is going to be to create our product table, so I'm going to start off with a product ID. Now for my product ID, I'm going to use an auto number. I can simply type A, and it will come up as an auto number first. I can, of course, click on my drop-down menu and find auto number, but I find this is a little bit faster and easier. I'm going to go ahead and set this as a primary key. And then I'm going to move to my next field. So one of the things that's really important to know when you're working on creating a table is there's really only about three different types of data that you're going to run into. Text, numbers, and dates. So we're going to look at all three of those and subtypes or variants of those that you're going to find. So here in my product, I'm going to choose a product name. And I'm going to choose short text. My short text is fine for something like this. Anything that I'm going to have that's going to be 255 characters or less is great. In my field properties, if I want, I can make that field smaller. So for things like, for example, a phone number or a zip code or an employee number, I can make it smaller and be a little bit more efficient with how I store my data. Next, I'm going to pick something that's going to be a little bit larger, and this is going to be a product description. You'll notice that when I create a field, short text is the default. You can go into Access and make a change with this if you want, but that's the default. In other databases, you'll usually find this as a varchar or a varchar2, and that's most commonly used. And so that's why it's a default here. One limit to this in Access is that it can only be 255 characters, and that's very limiting. I need something longer to properly describe this. So from my drop-down menu, I'm going to choose long text. Long text used to be called memo years ago and different versions back, and this has a lot more space. So how much text can you store in a long text? Well, you can store up to about one gigabyte. However, a lot of our controls that we use to display it will only display the first 64,000 characters. Now, if you go only 64,000 characters, well, that's approximately 32 pages. So quite a bit. And that's just in what it displays. It stores more. You know, you might ask, well, why can you store more than you can display? Well, because you can export out to other systems. Let's look at some other things that we might have in here. One thing I'm going to want to know is the unit price. What it cost me. Luckily, we have a currency option, and I can just simply type C and currency will come up. If I look down at my field properties, you're going to notice that I have a format that shows currency. I can click on a drop down and I can specify either currency, which is my local currency, or certain other specific currencies like Euro, as well as other number formats. And that's because this is numeric data. It's one of the number types. Currency just has some additional information about it to make it a little bit easier to use, something that Access provides. Now, while Access has a currency data type, not all databases do, and therefore you might need to find a different numeric data type in order to store that information. Under our field properties, we can choose a default value. For numbers, it defaults to zero. We can also choose if we want this required, indexed, etc. Typically, we're not going to index things like a currency amount or a price because that's not something we typically look up by. However, I might want to specify that it is required simply because I don't want to not have a unit price listed. I'm going to choose a retail price using the exact same settings as I did for my unit price. Now, you might ask about profit. You might say, is that something I need to store in here? 
Well, I can, but I don't have to. Because all I need to do is look at my retail price and unit price. If I subtract my unit price from my retail price, I get my profit. And so since it's calculated, I'm not going to worry about storing that data. I don't want to store any extra data. I don't have to, unless my calculation is very complex. It might slow down my database too much. Let's look at some other things I might run into, maybe a different number type. So for example, items in stock. So what's my current supply on? So I'm going to come in here and I can choose a number. I can choose a long number. In this case, I'm simply going to choose a number. If you look under field properties, you can see field size. By default, it comes up as a long integer. I have other values I can put in. These are the other types of numbers that are provided for me. Now, in some databases, they're going to call them a different name right off the bat. In something like Access, we simply pick number and then specify what type of number we're going to have. In most cases, I can use an integer. Integers take a little bit less space than a long integer, so therefore it's not as resource intensive for me. Let's look at a different value. And that is maybe, is it discontinued? And in this case, I'm going to simply choose a yes, no field. In our case, a yes, no field is like a Boolean data type. And some databases call this a Boolean or a bool data type. Other databases don't have it at all. In which case, a lot of times they use something like an integer and they have a one for yes and a zero for no. It's a nice, easy fix when you don't have this data type. All right, let's look at something else that we might have. This is going to be a created on, and this is going to be for a date time field. Now you might know, well, why do I care about when a field was created? Well, a lot of times for auditing purposes, this is something I need to know. And so therefore I have to keep track of when items were created. So, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to save this real quick by clicking on my save icon on the upper left hand side. It's going to ask me for my table name. And I'm going to choose a default value. Now I can type something in or I can click on these three dots. I'm going to choose functions, built in functions, then click date time. And you notice I have a wide variety of day and time values. Notice if I pick date, I get the date containing the current system date. Other databases will have something like current date time, and maybe it's a built-in value that it has that I can automatically set it to. In Access, I'm going to do it like this, and I'm simply going to double-click on that expression value, and this is going to be close enough for me. This is a function that comes with access. This is going to be very different if I move to other databases. Now, the reason why I saved it a little bit earlier is that sometimes when I click on those three little dots, for example, an input mask or a default value, it'll ask me to save it first anyway. So I just kind of took that step. The only thing I want to do is I might want to change my format. And you notice I have a variety of different formats that I can pick for my date. Notice it's not asking me to save it if I change the format, and this is true of any of your fields. But it does give me a nice way to view it. I'm going to simply start off with the general date form because it has both the day and the time. I'm going to click Save. Now that I've saved it, I want to go to my datasheet view just to see what it looks like. So I'm going to click on my view, and datasheet is the default if you're in design view. You can see this here. You'll notice that I have a space for my product name and description. My two currency fields automatically have dollar signs with the appropriate number of decimal places for them. The items in stock listed as zero because that's the default, but it doesn't need decimal places because it's an integer. The discontinued is a checkbox and it's unchecked because by default it's false. And the create on you can see has the current date.
So this is all kind of very interesting and set up for me so I can see those default values. I can see how it's pre-formatted for me. All this work is done for me. And that's one of the things that makes working with Access very nice. In an upcoming video, we'll look at adding information to this table. You can see how easy it does make this for us.